ovarian cancer may actually start in the fallopian tubes. A preliminary study of ovarian cancer suggests that its roots may lie in the fallopian tubes, a finding that could provide a new insight in treating the deadly disease. Ovarian cancer is the fifth largest cause of cancer deaths in women, as it is often detected late or is already widespread at the time of diagnosis. Scientists examined cell samples from women with ovarian tumors and those with cancer risk factors and found that all have mutations affecting the cancer-guarding P53 gene and two other tumor-suppressing genes. They tracked the source of the mutations to the fallopian tubes, where the cancer developed and eventually migrated to the ovaries over a 6.5-year period. Once in the ovaries, the cancer progressed more rapidly, metastasizing within two years. The team's findings will need to be further validated by additional studies, but the results provide a glimmer of hope. With such a large window from fallopian tube to ovarian cancer, scientists believe new methods should still be developed to detect and treat the cancer while it's still localized in the tubes. Science is finding all sorts of creative ways to kick cancer's butt. Metastatic cancer could be stopped. A research team led by the Georgia Institute of Technology has developed a new treatment that can potentially stop cancer cells from migrating inside the human body. Cells contain cytoskeletons to give them their shape and to carry out functions such as division and movement. In order to move, the cytoskeletons produce protrusions called phyllopodia, which extends from fibers inside the cell known as lamellopodia. The protrusions help cells to shift locations. Lamellopodia and phyllopodia are overproduced in malignant cancer cells, enabling them to spread around the body at faster speeds. Cancer kills patients often through the spread of malignant cells, which is known as the metastases process. By attaching nanorods comprised of a small collection of gold atoms to the integrin of the cells, the cytoskeleton can be stopped from overproducing lamellopodia and phyllopodia, which slows down the migration of malignant cells. A low-energy laser of near-infrared light is then used on the cells. The light is absorbed by the gold nanorods, which then partially melts cancer cells and damages lamellopodia and phyllopodia. This can bring the migration of the cancer cells to a stop. If desired, the laser light can also be adjusted to kill the cancer cells. The experimental treatment shows no observable damage to healthy cells, which is an advantage over commonly used chemotherapy. In the experiments, scientists also did not see the treated cancer recur. Could Zika be a brain cancer cure? The Zika virus caused an epidemic of microcephaly in South America, but now scientists say it may be the key to defeating a deadly and hard-to-treat form of brain cancer. Glioblastoma is typically treated using surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation, but cancer stem cells often survive the treatment and go on to produce new tumors. The ability to create new cells is also seen in neuroprogenitor cells, which Zika targets and destroys. This prompted scientists to hypothesize that it may also be able to target glioblastoma stem cells. Scientists infected tumors with one of two Zika virus strains and found that both destroyed stem cells while bypassing other tumor cells. Mice were then injected with either a saltwater placebo or Zika virus cells. Researchers found that those infected with Zika had smaller tumors two weeks later. Mutations were also introduced into the Zika cells as an additional safety feature, rendering them still able to destroy cancer stem cells, but also easier to eliminate from the host body. The findings indicate that Zika infection can be used to complement conventional treatment to eradicate the cancer. But though promising, the research still has a long way to go before it can be safely given the green light for human trials. T-cell therapy could teach the body how to kill cancer. Scientists in the U.S. and Italy are developing a revolutionary cancer therapy that would teach the body to destroy cancer cells on its own, reducing the need for debilitating chemotherapy treatments. T-cell immunotherapy trials have shown great results in the U.S. study so far, with 94% of terminal leukemia patients going into remission. More than 40 patients with other blood cancers were also treated, and more than half of them were left cancer-free. The therapy is similar to a treatment given to British baby Layla Richards last year. Layla Richards was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, a disease in which the bone marrow makes too many immature lymphocytes. 
In a healthy child, the bone marrow makes blood stem cells that become myeloid stem cells or lymphoid stem cells, which then develop into mature red blood cells, platelets, or white blood cells. However, in a child with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, too many stem cells develop into lymphoblasts, B lymphocytes, or T lymphocytes, which are in fact leukemia cells. The leukemia cells are not able to fight infection, and they take up space for healthy blood cells in the blood and bone marrow. This may lead to infection, anemia, and easy bleeding. Last year, doctors in London used a new gene editing technology known as Talon on Layla. The technology uses molecular tools that act like scissors to cut specific genes in order to make the T cells from healthy donors behave in two specific ways. First, the cells are able to become invisible to a powerful leukemia drug that would normally kill them. Second, they are reprogrammed to target and fight against leukemia cells only. A similar treatment is being tested in Seattle. The new technique involves removing T cells from patients and genetically modifying them by adding chimeric antigen receptors, or CARs, from genetically engineered mice, which are able to target cancer. The modified T cells are then injected back into the patient's body. In a second major breakthrough in Italy, researchers have discovered that memory T cells can stay in the body for at least 14 years. This means they could be trained to fight cancer, as well as to remember the disease in case it comes back, allowing them to defeat it again. The latest discovery gives hope for the development of a vaccine-style drug that could stop cancer from coming back once it has been defeated. Another Cancer Research Breakthrough Scientists in Portugal have demonstrated that zebrafish larvae can be used as avatars for people in that they can predict the response of human cancer tumors to various drugs. This would enable researchers to choose the more efficient treatments for patients. Scientists implanted human cancer cells into zebrafish larvae and allowed them to grow. They then added different chemotherapy drugs to the fish's water tanks and discovered the fish had different physical responses to effective and ineffective drugs. This was consistent with the patient's responses to various treatments. Similar experiments have been done on mice, but tumors require at least two months to grow inside mice, whereas with zebrafish, growth can take place in about two weeks. The team plans to conduct the same experiments in hundreds of patients in order to confirm the accuracy of the fish's response, which would be completed within two years.